Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars and I'm here with you today with episode 4.8 of the video series Satan's Powers and What to Do About Them by Alice B. Claggett. This episode 4.8 is entitled Accuser of the Brethren. This term, accuser of the brethren, is used for Satan in Revelation 12, King James Version, which is public domain. It's in verse 10, which I will read to you. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down which accused them before our God day and night here's my comment I am guessing this attribute of Satan accuser of the brethren has to do with persecution of those with the high light quotient. For instance, light workers, spirit-filled Christians, and those kinds of people. Truthfully though, it is not persecution. It is actually an opportunity for each of us to transform darkness to light through loving awareness. It's interesting that we're hearing these ravens with the very harsh voices right now. Very unusual tone of voice and way of speaking for ravens. They sound rough and cruel, don't they? along with the occasional call call of a regular raven. And the voices of the ravens today remind me a little of this name for Satan, accuser of the brethren. It sounds like these ravens are accusing or attacking or condemning me. You should have been here when I first sat under this huge oak tree. Uh, I sat down and I adjusted the camcorder and then the raven started up. It was very spooky. There was one over here and another over there calling and answering each other and making a really loud uh, attacking sound. So it's apt today to hear the ravens doing this. It's the sound that they're making reminds me of this attribute of Satan. I have two images for you today. The first one is called False, The False Witnesses by James Tissot between 1886 and 1894 and it's from Wikimedia Commons. It may be a little hard for you to see because it's a dark image. It's a picture of just all kinds of men in a high state of uh, anger, I think, um, jeering and shouting and raising their hands and, and uh, all aimed in the same direction, probably, during a trial. Can you see them? All these men, they seem to be a mob of angry men. Yeah. And here's my comment on the image. My feeling is that people who bear false witness, and most especially those who engage in character assassination for reasons of business profit, jealousy, or revenge, may have been tempted by Satan to be involved in this action. I read once in a Catholic treatise that the author felt gossip and calumny 
to be mortal sins. I feel he said this because of the great test of faith the victim of false witness must endure. It is even possible that false witness may cause an innocent person, whether a man or a woman or a child, to be prevented from attending church and receiving the sacraments. That must surely be a great evil for the instigator of false witness to bear. Christ stood with great dignity before his false accusers, though he knew it would surely mean his death. So must we, who may be maligned, stand with faith in God through all adversity. I have one more image for you. The title is Calumny of Apelles by Sandro Botticelli between about 1496 and about 1497 in Wikimedia Commons, so it's public domain in this case. This is an allegorical painting. There are a number of characters in this allegory. It's, it's a pretty lively scene. I'm caught especially by the woman in red in the center there, but there are a number of other important characters in this allegory that I will explain to you one by one. Here's the description. Botticelli made this painting on the description of a painting by Apelles, a Greek painter of the Hellenistic period. Apelles' works have not survived, but Lucian recorded details of one in his On Calumny. On the right of it sits Midas with very large ears, extending his hand to slander while she is still at some distance from him. So we have we have Midas uh, extending his hand down this way towards the lady clothed in blue, the beautiful lady clothed in blue who is bearing a torch here. Meaning she has something cooking, I guess, or some hot news tip for him. Near him, on one side, stand two women, ignorance and suspicion. So we have here Midas with ignorance and suspicion standing next to him. Now the description goes on regarding this woman here, slander, the beautiful woman in blue. On the other side, slander is coming up, a woman beautiful beyond measure, but full of malignant passion and excitement, evincing, as she does, fury and wrath by carrying in her left hand a blazing torch and with the other dragging by the hair a young man who stretches out his hands to heaven and calls the gods to witness his innocence. All right, this young man who is, looks like he has his hands clasped in prayer, is right here. Looks like she may be slandering him. She, that means slander, is conducted by a pale, ugly man who has a piercing eye and looks as if he had wasted away in long illness. He represents envy. And I believe that man that is conducting slander is this, this dark cloaked man here, described as not that appealing of a gentleman. This is envy, envy right here. 
There are two women in attendance to slander. One is fraud and the other conspiracy. Wow. So it looks like the red garbed woman is either fraud or conspiracy attended upon slander. And there's another woman uh, next to slander who is the opposite of the pair. One is fraud and one is conspiracy. It's a pretty complicated allegory. They are followed by a woman dressed in deep mourning with black clothes all in tatters. She is repentance. And here is repentance. Very somber figure, dressed in black, you see, looking backwards. At all events, she is turning back with tears in her eyes and casting a stealthy glance full of shame at Truth, who is slowly approaching. And I'm guessing that Truth is the lady with almost nothing on. And the idea is that she, she is not concealing anything. I'd say not. There's truth here. Here's my comment. What a wonderful allegorical painting this is. Depicting as it does all the major players in the upsets of life on earth. Greed in the person of Midas. Slander. Ignorance. Suspicion. Envy, fraud, conspiracy, repentance, and truth. This is quite a concatenation of calamity. Do you not agree? How beautiful slander is, and how likely to win the ear of a willing Midas. How long shall it be till truth be heard? Well, dear ones, that's all there is for you today. May God bless you and keep you safe and be with you through all your days.